tiniest store ever and I spent two hours there. to my channel i'm annette and this is a vintage splendor we are back from japan i feel like i was talking about our japan trip for so long we finally went and i am back and let me tell you we absolutely loved it the people the culture the history the food the sights everything was just remarkable we fell in love and Alan and I are already talking about when we can go back we definitely want to experience Japan and spend more time visiting some other cities and small towns and let me just tell you if Japan is on your list make it happen you will absolutely love it leading up to this trip everybody said Annette you're going to love the thrifting you're gonna love the vintage shopping you're going to love the secondhand designer shops and I was so excited for it and I knew about the secondhand designer market because I've shared that with you is there's so much inventory in Japan and China you can get really great deals but I was still really excited to just go in to some of these stores look at the inventory compare prices just to see if there were styles that I don't find when I'm searching on eBay or just through some of these store Instagram pages. So if you are thinking about going to Japan, right now is a great time if you are looking to shop. So the US dollar is very strong compared to the yen, so there is a big savings there. Plus, you can do a lot of duty-free shopping there over a certain amount. I think it's anything over 5,500 yen. And that's about 10% savings. So that's a chunk of change if you're looking to buy a lot of pieces. Right, let's dive in to thrifting, vintage shopping, and just secondhand designer goods in Japan. I think we were all excited. I was excited. I think you're all excited to see what I was able to find and how much I actually brought back. So that's why I'm going to do this little haul and just chat through the whole shopping experience. If you've done any research about thrifting or vintage shopping in Japan, I'm sure you've heard of the Shimokitazawa neighborhood. It is this very eclectic, almost bohemian neighborhood in Tokyo. And it's a really, really great neighborhood if you want to stay there just to be somewhere like outside of like the really urban core of Japan. But there are tons of bookstores, vintage shops and cafes. And we spent a day there just exploring the stores and enjoying the cafes. And this is where I did a lot of just research shopping. But let me tell you. 90% of the vintage in Japan is American. So these sellers come out to the US, they buy up a ton of American brands and they take it back to Japan and that is what is popular, that is what sells there. So think Ralph Lauren, Levi's, Liz Claiborne, college sweatshirts and t-shirts, sports t-shirts and sweatshirts, all of that vintage goodness is in Japan. I went into a ton of stores just to take a look at it. The prices are great because of the exchange rate right now, but I wanted to find unique stuff. I mean, I'm always shopping for Levi's or Ralph Lauren or college sweatshirts. So as much as I loved looking through all of that inventory, I wanted something a little bit different. All the stores are super, super curated and they're just organized really, really nicely. And they're just really fun to shop. I definitely spend time shopping, especially if you are traveling from an area that doesn't have a ton of flea markets or a lot of great thrift stores because in LA we do have a lot of great flea markets and thrift stores so I have access to all that stuff but I do have friends who live in different parts of the world and the country and that's what they want and I would say Japan is probably a great place to find that. When I travel to new places I'm looking for vintage or just designer pieces that I wouldn't normally be able to find in my everyday thrifting. 
You know, I'm a denim girl. I love denim and I didn't want to just buy another pair of vintage Levi's, even though I could always use another two, three Levi's. These I found, they're vintage Dickies, but they're reworked. And I found it at a store called Flamingo. They have multiple locations, even in that area. They have, I think, four or five stores, um, and each store has different reworked. So these are men's dickies that they reworked, and they look so good. I love them. These came out to about $100 with the exchange rate. I know that's like a little bit more than I would typically spend on vintage denim, but because they are one of a kind, they're reworked, and they fit me exactly. They like fit me so well. I had to buy them on, but these are like such a great fit on me. I love them. I actually wore them while we were in Japan, but I just love that it has some of like the OG, like vintage uh, Dickies elements here. And then this strap right here. So I was very excited to find these and the fact that they were my size. And I think the price um, is right for what it is. I felt like this was a really good buy. Japanese vintage stores have a ton of reworked pieces. So I found a lot of like men's Ralph Lauren polos that were turned into like drawstring crop tops. There were other tops that were like made into like v-necks so there's a lot of cool reworking happening that in mind when you are shopping in japan because i think those are cool pieces that you could buy even though it might be ralph lauren it might be dickie's american brands but you're not going to find that reworked piece in the states another fun store in this neighborhood is called garage department and i would say this is like most similar to an antique center where you go and there's like tons of tiny little vendors. This place was that, but with vintage clothes, and it was super fun. So funny thing is in Japanese culture, they are very, very quiet. You can go into restaurants, subway, even in the downtown, there's like no noise, nobody's loud. But in garage department, there was like loud music blasting, people were talking in this fun, eclectic, giant vintage store. And that was a really fun experience. So I stopped into this cute little shop that had pink neon signs. And I found this skirt. Um, it is not vintage, but it's secondhand. So even though it's not vintage, I wanted to spend money on something I wouldn't be able to find here. This is not a brand that I could find in the States. It's a small um, Japanese brand and I just really, really love the layered feel and I love the ribbon detail on the bottom. So this is a maxi skirt. I wore this while we were out shopping a few days too. And it's just like one of those skirts that I could wear in the summer with like a crop top or a bra top or even like a corset but then wear it in the winter with some boots, chunky sweaters, sweatshirts, blazers, just really have fun with it. I think for this skirt, I paid 30 US dollars, which again, I thought was a good deal because it's not something I'm gonna find here and it is a Japanese brand. So Tokyo has several really big secondhand designer stores and I went into a few of them just to look around and I would say the price is probably similar and on par with what you would buy in the United States. So I just looked around and just wanted to get a sense of what it was. They were also really, really busy. I think people were just excited to buy secondhand designer bags. So I was just a little bit more, I would say, just kind of was there as an observer as opposed to a shopper and it was like nice to see them. But then I decided, you know what? Tokyo is like the big epicenter. Everybody goes there for vintage and secondhand designer goods. I'm gonna wait until we go to Kyoto, which is a little bit smaller. Not everybody goes there and it's hopefully there will be more inventory and the prices will be a little bit cheaper there. So when we were in Kyoto, I popped into a few secondhand designer stores and I felt like the inventory there was a little bit more eclectic. So I feel like in Tokyo, people are a little bit more neutral, very minimalist, a lot of black and white outfits. A lot of the stores mostly had just black handbags. But like while Tokyo is more, I would say minimalist and neutral 
and not flashy. Kyoto is a little bit more eclectic. You get a little bit more color and you see people having fun with fashion. I was excited to pop into some of the resale shops to see what their inventory was. They definitely did have a little bit more variety than Tokyo. I was hoping to find a Kelly Green yellow or purple Chanel bag. I think I mentioned this a few episodes back. I just wanted something colorful, something fun, something neat. Did not want another black bag. And that is pretty much all they had in Tokyo and in Kyoto. And in one of the stores, I was talking to uh, the sales rep there and we were actually using Google Translate to communicate. And he said, well, I'm not big on flashy color and neither are the Japanese. And then I said, well, I only like color. And I was wearing mixed print and color. And he's like, can you show me a sense of your style? And I was giving him an idea of my Instagram feed just so he could get it. He's like, oh my gosh, you love color. He's like, why did you come to Japan to do your shopping? He's like, well, you don't like color. So he gave me some recommendations on where to look and I popped into one of his recommended stores and I did find a bag. I was like, I need to jump on this. This is the Celine Cutie I got. So as you can tell, it is a vanity bag, which I love. I have an affinity for them. I just think they're really, really great bags. You can always find them for cheaper than like the standard or traditional bag. And I love that this has two different zipper compartments. Um, this is from the early 90s and the print is the Makadam print. And yes, this is black and brown. I know I didn't go colorful, but it was $500 and it's what I had budgeted. Um, I actually had budgeted more to spend on a designer bag, but when I didn't see the colorful bag that I wanted, I thought this is great. I can save money, not just buy a bag to buy a bag. And this is a style that I've been wanting. I've been wanting the Celine Makadam bag and the fact that it came in a vanity it was like it's a done deal and it's really pretty i think it can be dressed up it could be dressed down and i'm really excited to use it even though i didn't find exactly what i wanted in japan at these resale shops is not to say you're not going to find what you want of course like styles are very cyclical the money and if you are going in the next three to four months, I think you can find a really great deal on a vintage or secondhand designer bag because of the exchange rate and because of the duty free. Take your money, buy something great there. They are so helpful in Japan. I have to say they are so courteous. They are so lovely, uh, so kind, and just want to help you find that dream bag. In Japan, even if a store didn't have exactly what I wanted, they would always point me in the right direction. They just wanted me to leave happy, and I absolutely love that. So, the last day in Kyoto, I popped into an antique store. One of my followers on Instagram had told me a few days um, prior to that, you should try and go to this antique store, but they have very, very erratic hours. They don't have a consistent schedule of when they're open and you have to email for an appointment. So I sent an email saying, can I please come in on Saturday at 11 a.m.? and I was not expecting a response. And later I got a response, yes, I'll see you there at 11. And at this point, I had not checked off other items off of my shopping list. So I still didn't have kimonos, I didn't have ceramic bolts, I wanted really pretty like antique uh, wood block print pieces. I wanted some tchotchkes to bring back for the girls. So it was like, we're leaving Kyoto, we're heading back to Tokyo, and I still don't have a lot of pieces that I want to bring back from Japan. I've never purchased a kimono in the United States. It was always something that I said, I am going to wait. And when I go to Japan, I'm going to buy an antique or vintage kimono and I want it to be authentic. And I just want that experience of shopping for it in Japan. Well, let me tell you, this antique store, it's called Maiko antiques it is such a tiny store tiniest store ever and i spent two hours there 
digging through everything and just shopping and I had such an incredible time in the store. The owner was so kind and gracious and helpful and I bought some gems. So I walked away with four vintage kimonos. I bought two for myself and two, one for each of my sisters because I told them I'm gonna bring you back kimonos. I always bring back some goods for them. I also bought Kokeshi doll. Um, for the girls plus a couple of other tchotchkes. So the kimonos that I bought I All of them were labeled um, with the decade that they're from but I also just asked questions about The kimonos. So this one is from the 1940s It is so beautiful. I want you to see this print on it. Look at that and it's so i love the butter yellow i love the print and this um and this i'm very excited to style up it's very long on me but i'm gonna make it work um so this one was definitely one of the ones that i spotted and then i thought but i want something that's really colorful that's a little bit more traditional so i kept digging and then i found this one so this is 1920s isn't it so beautiful? It is absolutely gorgeous. This is exactly what I had in mind when I was thinking of buying something from Japan. It is absolutely perfect. I can't believe it. I mean, this is an antique piece right now. It's 100 years old. It's in excellent condition. It's so pretty. I can't wait until I style it. The kimonos ranged in price from about 25 to $80. This one was the most expensive because I think it's the oldest. It's silk. It's in excellent condition. Um, so the rest were actually very inexpensive. Kimonos in the U.S. generally run $200 plus. So I was glad that I was able to buy four for less than $180. Finding a cool tchotchke like this Kokeshi doll was also on my Japan thrifting vintage list. So Kokeshi dolls actually children's toys they also are supposed to bring good luck and fortune so i think it's really great i just think the craftsmanship of these pieces are really great each one is very very unique and so while the girls are not actually going to play with this i think we're going to just put it up in their room and even if they play with it i feel like we don't live in a museum I want my kids to feel comfortable in our house and to have really great memories of um, everything that we have. So even if they play with it, it's fine. And it's meant to be joyed and something that um, the owner of the store told me. So whoever makes the doll, they'll sign it on the bottom. Um, so this is this great piece. Um, so this is gonna go probably on our bookshelf or maybe somewhere in the living room for a little bit. Uh, this doll, I think, was about $5. I've seen them at flea markets in the States, and they're always really expensive. And honestly, it didn't matter to me if it was expensive or not. I just really wanted an authentic piece like this for the girls. My idea when I collect these cool things when we travel is, you know, in a long time, when I'm gone. I want the girls to kind of fight over this stuff and say like, no, I want this. I, I remember when mom bought this for us. Oh, this is gonna help me remember our Japan trip. So I know that's kind of weird, I thought to have, but that's how I think about things when I'm curating them. <laughs> Another piece I had on my wish list was a vintage wood block print. And this one I just thought was really stunning. I found it in a pile. These were only a couple of dollars. This one was the one that I liked best and I bought this one. So this is gonna get framed. It's gonna get put up on our gallery wall up the stairs. That's where we have our travel pictures, travel mementos, vintage maps of places that we've traveled and this will go there. All in all, I spent less than $200 at this antique store um, and I bought exactly what I wanted. So that is my uh, Japan shopping and thrifting haul. I hope you enjoyed it. I loved Japan so much. I am looking forward to traveling there again. I think everybody thought I was gonna come back with so many items from Japan, but I'm glad that I was pretty minimal with my purchases and each piece is very unique and very special. I love the thrill of the thrift. I love a good bargain. I love finding 
designer items, vintage or secondhand, but I really wanted to be really mindful about what I was buying. I want every piece to have a special meaning to me and I think I was able to achieve that with every piece that I bought. I know I'm gonna love all of them. I'm going to wear all of them and cherish them and hopefully my girls will be excited to wear the jeans or the kimonos one day. Let me know which piece was your favorite from my haul. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you next week. Bye.